Hey y'all, so I'm back with John Gorman and we're going to talk today about adaptive metabolisms. So as somebody who has been coaching people for a long time, you've seen this, I've seen this, I think any coach really has seen this and it's this really, I'm gonna just use a hypothetical example, we're just gonna make this up, but a client who wants to lose weight, who for all intents and purposes is doing everything right, somebody that we know is you know, not lying, not tracking things incorrectly, is training hard, and for whatever reason, they just can't seem to lose weight. Now, in my experience, a lot of it comes down to just time spent dieting previously, like past dieting history is huge for this. If you've yo-yo dieted for 10 years, don't expect to lose 30 pounds in you know, a few weeks. <laughs> you know, it's just not gonna happen. But if somebody is has taken all the right steps, like they've taken the off season, they've built up their calories, and they're just kind of in this like stubborn sticking point and they are maybe more adaptive, what are kind of things that you would do as far as like unique approaches with like training, cardio, nutrition, supplements, things that you found that maybe work when you're kind of in these spots? Yeah, so this is something that's really, really common. Like Yeah. And Unbelievably common. So if you're listening, don't feel like you're the only person, I promise. <laughs> Especially in females. Females seem to get hit with it a lot harder than guys. Um, yes. and I, to me, that has a lot to do with the hormones yeah. that go up and down when you prep, and when you diet a lot. So it's one of those things where you definitely see it in, in females. Because, I mean, it's one of those things like you guys have hormones that just every month, like they're mm -hmm. all over. So then you start throwing in long periods of dieting. And hormones like they start to crash things like your thyroid hormone leptin mm -hmm. which helps fuel um, your your thyroid to some extent like all those things get out of whack so it's it's definitely common so I've seen a lot of clients over this is what I wrote my first book on it's called metabolic capacity and reverse dieting and I always tell people it's the most important topic that I that I can talk about ever because this is everything like mm -hmm. people need to ex understand this so maybe some of the viewers out there they're they're like all right that's me exactly like yeah. i'm training hard I'm counting my macros <laughs> a female i'm eating 1400 calories for example you know i'm doing everything right and nothing's budging so i drop my calories and i add a little bit of cardio and three weeks go by and i'm like crap so i do it again and three weeks go by and nothing happens Usually what I do is I qualify all my clients and I look at their dieting history before I'll diet them. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, but if that's not the situation, what I normally look at is, okay, so what's your dieting history look like and where are we possibly going to have to go? Because more yes. likely than not, if you're up 1400 calories and you're, you've made two or three changes and nothing seems to be working, you're going to have to end up going lower then a lot of people don't want to go. And yeah. that scares a lot of coaches too. So like if you're a yeah. coach watching, that scares you because people were getting called out for years. Mm -hmm. So-and-so had me on 1,100 calories and an hour of cardio and, they, and they, all these coaches are looking like they're doing something wrong, but they were working with what they had. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they have this situation. So the reality is the first step is you have to go lower on your calories. Mm -hmm. You have to accept that and you have to understand. If not, the only answer is, one, go to the doctor and get your thyroid checked out because mm -hmm. you might actually be somebody that needs yeah. thyroid meds. But if it's not, you need to spend more time off so your body's yeah. away from unused to dieting. I've had clients I had to work two to three years with who were Weight Watcher, yo-yo dieters, mm -hmm. ladies, okay. yeah. and it took that long. No one wants to hear that. No, no, I literally- No one wants to hear that. People come to me and they say stuff like that. I'm like, listen, here's the timeline. And for, I'd say 90% of people, they, they say they want it and then they, they really don't. And, and and trust me, I understand how frustrating this is because there are plenty of people who do everything wrong and they don't have any of these issues. Yeah. I know a lot of them and they're very successful and they're very lean and they have a lot of muscle and they just eat like ass hats. And you're like, I don't understand. How is this not happening? And I know people who've literally had like one bad, really harsh diet and their body is just like, hold on to everything for yeah. years. And it doesn't make sense and it's not fair, but that's just genetics and that's, what some people have to deal with. So yes, the the one of the things I always ask besides dieting history is what did you do last time that you had to diet? And like John was saying, I, I, there are some people that are going to have to be lower calorie than others to get leaner. Mm -hmm. There are some people who can change that 100%, taking the proper time off, actually building the right amount of muscle mass, you know, having you know, all these kinds of things in place. But for the most part, when you diet, for most females, you're gonna have to get kind of aggressive if you wanna get really lean. If you're just a lifestyle client and you're getting really aggressive and you're not seeing progress, stop dieting. If you're doing a competition and you're a few weeks out and you're like, I really, really wanna like turn it up a notch, 
this is kind of who we're talking to. So if this is you and we've kind of established this, what are things that you would suggest doing, like very specific for, again, this population, this niche group? Yeah, so a lot of people when they diet, they just have one straight caloric level of food. Like, you know, maybe it's 1,400 calories. It's just straight across the board, seven days a week for weeks on end. And your body actually adapts to that and it gets used to that. So what I like to do is take advantage of this. It's a hormone called leptin. And what you do is you have a higher calorie day. Now that doesn't mean you blow it out. Like that this just means slightly yeah. higher. <laughs> so um, an example would be, you know, if you're eating 1400 calories, you might drop that down to 1300 and you might have a high day on a Monday and Thursday of maybe 1500 calories. And what that does is that gives your, your metabolism a slight boost, just enough. And what that boost does, it actually helps speed your metabolism up to help fuel fat loss. So my first step is always to go from just a baseline diet with no high days to put in two high days are good. And you know, you just start with one if you're worried about it, but two are good because you can only boost your metabolism for a few days and then it's, it drops yeah. back off. You're better to go ahead and boost it again, just in smaller amounts. So yeah. one to two high days a week, that's usually the first thing I do. And I let leptin do its job to get the metabolism. Yeah. Metabolism, everything as far as fueling fat loss. So that's the first thing that I do. Yeah, that's the, there's not really much research on refeeds. Um, and one of the reviews that I actually was reading was there wasn't really much difference as far as like, um, you know, that they could see measurably besides leptin changes. Um, it was acute, of course, but this was an acute feeding, you know, an acute right. refeed showed an acute change in leptin. So that could possibly help, um, you know, and then, of course, we can't ignore the psychological benefits of having a little bit more calories on certain days. Um, and then would you change anything with like training or things like that? So one of the things I like to look at is how much steady state cardio someone's doing. Like maybe they're jogging, maybe they're walking for an hour, they're on the elliptical. It's just steady state. And the thing with steady state is if it's high, chronic cortisol can can actually impair your metabolism mm -hmm. because what happens is like say you're going on a you know an hour high speed walk seven days a week which is very common especially for females mm -hmm. it just is what it is um, cortisol stays chronically high that actually down regulates your thyroid specifically t3 so then you have cardio is actually starting to work against you if you're doing high levels of it so i look at that and i just start to pull some of that back and let cortisol drop and I like to utilize HIIT cardio because HIIT cardio actually speeds up your metabolism. There was a study, and I don't remember where it was, but I saw that someone walked for an hour and they measured metabolic rate and it went up like five to 6%, but then someone did like five hard sprints or something on a bike, like just five hard hit intervals and measured their metabolism and their metabolic rate actually went up 66%. So that's one of those things to where you can start to speed up your metabolism and you pair that with your high carb day. And I think that's a great one-two punch. So the high carb days are boosting yeah. leptin and then you put the hit cardio there to help kind of offset the high carbs on that day anyway, yeah. but then you speed your metabolism up. And that seems to be a good one-two punch that I like to combine. Yeah, no, definitely that makes sense. And I kind of look at to um, some types of training as hit almost too. You know, um, if you're doing kind of heavy and hard training and you're having maybe short rest intervals or you're doing higher reps and it's still heavy, um, you know, so all these different things that you can look at as far as like hit. So don't just think that it has to be, you know, like all out in the elliptical. It can be something that's challenging too, you know, like yeah. you're pushing something. But whatever it is, like make sure you're going all out and that it actually is hard. <laughs> um, that's the important part of hit. Like when people say, oh, I do hit intervals, like one minute on, one minute off, that's not hit. That's just intervals, which is fine, but that's not what we're talking about. Make sure this is like balls to the walls, all out kind of intervals, whether it's with weight or not, whatever kind of modality you're using. Um, so that's specifically what he's talking about. Yeah, I've actually seen, so I've seen my clients switch over from a bodybuilding split to CrossFit and they've left their calories the same and they got leaner just yeah. because of the boost in metabolism the type and, of and the training. type of yeah. training. So a little faster paced circuit style. Yeah, and yeah. it's still, you're still lifting weights and it's not like, I think a lot of people when they start dieting for a show or dieting in general, they, they get scared to like lift and they just think about cardio and dieting. Yeah. Um, but in reality, you really need to think about pushing yourself for training. Like that is huge because even if you're not building new muscle, you're still breaking it down and like repairing it. So that's yep. like energetically costly and that's going to help your metabolism just Definitely. in general. And this is kind of what we're talking about as people who are adaptive, we, their body's thinking like three steps ahead of us. So we need to be like, right there when yeah. it's going to and those people do find that you have to make diet changes more frequently like if somebody is just seems to be more adaptive in general like you have to make more changes frequently yeah it's one of those things where i have to watch really really close and i'm careful i try not to drop their calories hard 
that's a thing. It's yeah. a small change. So mm -hmm. I might drop 10 carbs for it. I've got a female now to where one week, if she's not dropping, I'll drop 10 carbs out of her mm -hmm. diet. If she's not dropping the next week, I'll add some cardio in. I never try and combine them because it's so much. Yeah, that's something that, yeah, that's something it's else. It's very tempting to throw all the gas on the mm -hmm. fire, but then you run out of room and like you don't have any cards to play. Then yeah. you're doing two hours of cardio and you're doing eating a thousand calories. Yeah. So I, I like really, I'm really careful with it, but it's like more like every two weeks I'm having to change yeah, something. Yeah, I know a lot of people like, I have, you know, people like that. And that sometimes, again, that's just the reality. And then there's sometimes where you can get on a kick and like your body's like, hey, I like this intake. And then you just kind of keep dropping. And those other times where the sweet it's spot. not. Yeah. So taking all those things into consideration, you guys, again, if you are, you know, this is for people who, like we talked about, if you're the person in the beginning of the video, you have a more adaptive metabolism and you're trying to like get maximize the end of your diet. If this is you at the beginning of your diet and you're really just kind of stalling out or you know, you're just getting to an unhealthy level for an extended period of time, I would call it quits, you know, on the diet. It, whatever whatever you're getting ready for is not ready for it. Ready it's not um, important enough, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know why I couldn't spit that up, but it's really not that important. Uh, put that into perspective. If it's a show, if it's an event. People are still gonna love you. People are still gonna care about you, even if you don't, you know, fit into whatever the hell you're trying to get ready for. And and again, I know it's hard because I'm a female and I've been there. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna go here. I want to like lose a little bit of weight, and I want to. We, we've all been there. So, but your long-term health is going to be so important. I just talked to somebody the other day who spent over 10 years. It was like 12 years up and down dieting, and. It, that's going to take a very long time to kind of get back from yeah. like it's not going to happen overnight and it's not going to happen most importantly with oh one tweak can I make to hit like no 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 you need like a, many years of working with somebody who's knowledgeable and taking times of an off season and times of a diet yeah so kind of put all these things together do what's right for your long term health you guys that's number one and thank you John for all your tips I think those yeah. were great so hopefully you guys enjoyed this um, let us know what you think below